verse number 10, very short scripture. If thou faint in the day of adversity, thy strength is small. If thou faint in the day of adversity. So the first night we came here and then I, I was speaking on the issue of suffering. Um, if you were there, you understand how we spoke about the suffering, sometimes holding on because Jesus before the cross uh, had to suffer and endure the most. So you see Jesus in the garden of Gethsemane and he's praying and a part of his prayer is a prayer of trying to change the will of God because of the pain that he's yet to experience. So he predicts what is about to come. He knows his body uh, cannot um, handle it. Or oh, can I say his stress levels are very high. Uh, because his stress levels are very high, the Bible tells us that what we have not yet seen unto men when men sweat blood. So part of his sweat, when the Bible is telling us, is saying that part of his sweat is sweating a sweat that is of blood, which means he's been thinking, he's been pondering, and even his body cannot um, uh, comprehend the pain that is about to come because there are certain things that when they become too much, I know people that have died because of thinking too much, stress levels, deep levels go up and then they die. But at this point, Jesus is carrying the whole world and because everything depends on him and because everything depends on him, he has got to follow through the will of God. And he, it's not time to give up now because um, we have come a long way, Jesus. It's already 33 years we've been preparing for this. Now that the time is here, we cannot give up. Uh, you have suffered all name calling. You have suffered all these other things. But uh, now we are here. This is what we were meant to do. The miracles were amazing. The praises were amazing. We were walking on top of, of, of those leaves and people throwing and celebrating at the Messiah. This was all amazing. When you were healing the people, it was amazing. When you were teaching, it was all amazing. When the 5,000 people were being fed, it was amazing. I mean, the glory was so much. It was He was the papa of our time. He was the major of our time because everyone from north, east, west, and south was busy trying to reach out to Jesus. Amen. I believe people were busy shipping themselves. They were busy catching airplanes because there was a man that was doing the unthinkable things that we had not happened in that generation. The Bible is clear enough saying that even the scribe had to sit down and say, we have not had it being taught in such a manner. There was a way that he would display excellence. There was a way that he would display power. Amen. You wouldn't do what they were used to doing. Even Moses in his time never demonstrated the things that Jesus was demonstrated. Up to the extent that even the Bible and scripture had to tell us that part of the things that he did were not even recorded in the Bible. Amen. This you sometimes uh, probably we can find it in the lost scriptures of the Bible which I'm not sure we are able to access until now. But now, now walk with me. It's always beautiful when it's glamorous. It's always easy when everyone is calling out your name. It's always good when everyone is saying Papa. But when, when the time for you to pay the price has come. Now, now, this is where the real challenge is. I mean, marriage is sweet when it's honey. Marriage is sweet when it's I love you. Marriage is sweet when it's baby come here. But marriage is bitter when the challenges of marriages come. When the hard questions come. Who is this who's calling you? Who is this who's texting you? When it's time for accountability, it's not as easy as you think. Amen. Do I have someone right here? Who's, who understands that accountability is not as easy as a one, two, three. 
Amen. So now Jesus is about to go to the cross. We have celebrated. We saw you casting out demons. We saw you demonstrating the power of God when you cast out a legion. I mean, it was amazing. We saw him and we heard about him walking on water. We thought, what kind of a man is this? But the same kind of a man is about to go through the most horrific and devastating thing that any man can go through. Now, mind you, Jesus is human being 100%. There is nothing about him that will exclude him from being 100%. Which, what am I saying? That the pain that he's about to go through is the same pain that you, you will go through. Amen. So he needed some strengthening from the divine because he knew that he can easily collapse before reaching the cross. That's why he had to intercede. So intercession was part of him. Oh my God. Saying God I need you to strengthen me. My God. That's why I told you that sometimes don't give up too easily when you are going through the process because God is not going to make you skip the process. God is going to take you through the process. My God, there are some situations that don't need deliverance. There are some situations that just need God, oh my God, to walk with you. Oh my God, I remember when I was young and my mother bought this paint and I love this paint and then she put it on the wall so it was a portrait and on the portrait I would see footsteps I don't know if you remember it I would see footsteps of two people walking together and then end up seeing one step of someone walking alone and then it was written on this portrait and it says oh Lord where were you when in my difficult times and God was like I was walking with you but eventually I got to a point where I needed to carry you. My God, I am not going to leave you alone, but sometimes I have to walk you through the mess. My God, I'm not going to deliver you. I'm not going to make this stop, but we're going to go through this issue together. Am I here somebody? Am I here somebody? Now listen to me and listen to me in the Holy Ghost. It does not matter what you've been going through. We got Jesus here as in our example. Jesus is now going through the moss. He's sweating. He's trying to figure out how can I make it in a short way? Oh my God, there are no shortcuts to miracles. There are no shortcuts to death. The devil is a liar. The devil is a liar. Somebody touch your neighbor and say, the devil is a liar. The devil is a liar. Oh my Jesus. Oh my Jesus. I feel the Holy Ghost in here. I feel like somebody is about to cross over to something. I don't care what you've been going through. I don't care what your family has been going through. Might be financial hardships. Oh my God. You might be trying to navigate to the uh, job industry. I don't care. Your frustrations with money, your frustrations with your relationships, uh, your financial, your frustrations with the society. God is saying, uh, I have chosen you um, for this very reason. Uh, you are not a mistake. Uh, don't look at yourself and think you are a mistake. Uh, because I have chosen you, Jeremiah, uh, before the foundations of the world. Uh, before your mama and your papa came together, before you were conceived, oh my Jesus, I chose you. Oh my God, you did not come to be a South African by, by, by mistake. Listen, there is a reason why you are not in America. Because it's a part of God's plan. Don't think if the economy is in hardships. Oh my God, you are in hardships as well. I feel like I'm about to preach it in this house. Ladies and gentlemen, I am here to decree and to declare upon your life. The same way Jesus went through pain and struggle. God is about not only just to carry you through him. But you are about, oh my God, to step in another dimension. You are about... I feel here. Let me let me stop. Let me let me just pull myself together for a minute. Now, 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 listen. Now, listen. So, we have Jesus here in the Garden of Gethsemane, and now Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane. Now he's negotiating because part of prayer is negotiating. It's uh, can I have some? Can I have something? Like, do we have a? Oh, oh my Jesus! Now, 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 part of prayer. Part of prayer is, is negotiating. Amen. 
Oh, the, de the devil is a liar. Amen. So part of prayer and intercession is communication. So you are communicating to God what you want God to do for you. You are negotiating. And it does not mean that God is not listening. Now, if you understand something about uh, negotiators, it's, uh, there are things that can be said yes and there are things that can be said no. Amen. So when I am in prayer, it means that I'm telling God what I want of my life. I'm, I, God, I want this to happen. Uh, I want this not to happen. God, can you deliver me from this? And he, because he holds the ultimate power to say yes or no. Remember, it's our, because you prayed about it, it does not mean it's a yes. Uh, it may Even the yes may mean the other way around that you don't expect. So it can still be a yes, but not your yes. It's his yes. And the difference between your yes and his yes, oh my Jesus. The Bible says, as far as heaven and earth is, that's as far as the my thoughts are from his thoughts. So you have to understand sometimes how to settle yourself accordingly. Now Joseph understood this. I spoke about Joseph when we started the conference. I was like, Joseph understood this. Because Joseph is a young man who's going through dreams. And in the dreams, he started seeing the calling of God upon his life. As if that was not enough, he was then chosen by the father or favored by the father. So the father chose him and favored him so much amongst the rest and gave him a court symbolizing the anointing and symbolizing the calling of God concerning his life of greatness. Now he accepts it but now understand the mistake oh my Jesus, the mistake this young man did was to speak to Eli. He spoke to Eli. He went he was braggadocious. He was bragging. Oh my God. Look at me. I'm about to get married. Look at me. I'm about to buy a Bankley. Look at me. I'm about to be the CEO. Now, because you've been bragging a lot, oh my God, your enemies and your haters will confide against you. Oh my Jesus, the brothers did not like. They thought you was too arrogant to be bossing. If you are too chosen, what about us? What does that make us? Oh my God, if you are too loved, what about us? Oh my God, so sometimes in life, you need to learn how to keep your mouth uh -huh. ladies and gentlemen now 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 check on this guy so he speaks too much and he spoke too early and because he spoke too early it made the brothers hate him even more and they took him down to the pit now it's on the pit that he started learning how to now, how do you speak? Can you speak to walls? You can't. There is no one to listen to you. Now, after the, the, the after the pit, you are taken out of the pit. You are now a slave. But how can you complain when you are now a slave? You can't complain. How do you complain? There is no right for you to complain. Now, he's taken down and then now he's in Egypt. And in Egypt, then he's got his, he got his promotion. Now, he's up there and then God still wants to demonstrate to him sometimes how to humble you. So, he take him away from the palace or Potiphar's house and he takes him to prison. Oh, my Jesus. And in prison, he had to stay cool. Oh my God, you have to stay cool because sometimes all you have to do is be patient while this God is working in the background. You may not see what he's doing, but he's doing something. You may not hear what he's doing, but he's doing something. Do you know that in 50, do you know that 50,000 miles, miles away from here, there is someone who's being inspired by God only for you? Mm, you are not here. Oh my God. Do you know that 50,000 miles away from here, there is someone. So um, part of my journey is, part of my journey is, man of God, is the fact that I never knew I was going to marry an American. I think I was so interested in marrying a South African. I'm Zimbabwean. But then there is this Zulu Kosa culture that is so into me. So such that when you meet me, you think I'm Zulu or I'm Kosa. But no, no, I just love the language and I can speak the language. But then I always thought I was going to marry a South African. African, someone who can interact with me in Zulu or is it also? Sing a teta song, sing a kuluma song. We are so right now. You get me now. But here's the thing. Part of destiny is this. God never told me that there is someone in America that I was gonna meet. How am I gonna meet them? Am I gonna travel to America? No, I didn't know. How am I gonna meet them? It was part of God's. 
plan. So what am I saying? Behind the scene, there is someone who is being advised. They don't know it even themselves. They don't know it that they are part of God's plan. Oh my God, things are going wrong for their lives. They don't understand that it's part of the path. Things are messing up. Their relationships are failing. They don't even understand why. They are, it's happening because she has to meet someone in Africa. Oh my God, she has to meet me who's going to be the husband to her. Am I speaking to you? So part of what, how God operates, he operates in a way that you cannot see. You cannot see it, of course, you cannot calculate God. You cannot calculate God. You cannot tame how God, but you can be sure of one thing, the miracle. You can be sure of one thing, the testimony. Am I still here? So part of what Jesus' journey is like is that they miscalculated God. They thought by killing him, it's over. Oh my God, there are people that entered in your life. Oh my God, they came there to kill your dreams. There are people sent by the enemy, came there to kill your dreams, came there to kill your marriage, your relationships, came there to kill your plans. Oh my God, I don't know how, but they were just coming there as a, an assignment from the devil. There were devils in human flesh. Oh my Jesus, I don't know if I have got, still have somebody in here. Did you have ever had someone in your life and you thought that, oh my God, you are a devil, not just only because you are angry and you are cursing, but you are trying to navigate yourself. How did this man be this evil to do me like this? Don't they regard that I'm also a human being? Can't they see how I feel? Can't they feel or respond to something? Oh my God, because they are people on assignment from the devil to destroy your life. Oh my Jesus, I feel some preaching coming in. Now here, here, oh my God, I want you to touch your neighbor for the, for the last time and say, neighbor, we are about to go deeper. Oh my Jesus, we are about to go deeper here. I feel the train moving right here. I feel the train moving. So here now they take Jesus, put him on the cross as if that was not enough. They had to embarrass and shame him. How many people have been embarrassed and shamed? We have been name called. We read here on the passage of Matthew chapter number 27 verse number 37. It says they put him oh my God, a name, and they say that Jesus, oh my God, it says this is Jesus, the king of the Jews, and they were trying to mock him, but they did not know what they were doing is that they were just busy confirming what he's been saying all along. Ladies and gentlemen, let me tell you, your betrayers, or your haters, what they didn't know is by mocking you, they are elevating you, because here's the thing, a person who's above you does not have time to mock you. Oh my Jesus, it's only those that are beneath you. I feel some praise coming in the house. I feel some deliverance here. Oh my God, just give me four, five, four minutes and we are about to wake this thing out. Now here, here. So they take Jesus. They put him on the cross. They put a name on him. And they give him a name. They try to mock him. Oh my Jesus. As though that was not enough. They did not go in there. They start spitting on him. Oh my God. They pour vinegar on him. He said, I am thirsty. They pour vinegar on him. Oh my Jesus. But they didn't know that by pouring vinegar. They were preserving him. Oh my Jesus, listen to me and listen to me. Do you know there are certain people who insult you without knowing that their insults is actually strengthening you. It's working things that you did not know. You can never know who you are until you go beyond a situation that is bigger than what you have been through. A oh, part of humanity that I love is that we are always still discovering how great we are. It's only when a situation comes that I know who Trevor is. Because without the situation, I cannot know myself. But it's when you reject me. When you say, I don't love you anymore. Oh my God, I'm going to leave you and you're going to die alone. And then I have to go through all the stress because you were my everything. I have got to go through all the stress of heartbreaks and pain and it's trying to oh my god and it's trying to pray myself out of this misery sometimes I can't even pray why because I am heartbreak 
broken. I don't even know. Now I'm thinking, Jesus, help me. Oh my God. But part of it, God is saying, go through the pain. Because I want you to discover on how bigger you are. Oh my God, the healing is in you. The healing is not going to come from heaven. It's in you already. You've got to recognize the greatness that I, I have already bestowed upon you. Oh my Jesus. And it's financial things that are going through. Oh my God, how can I make these figures make sense? The books are not balancing. How can I make them to balance? Lord, help me. Oh my God. But listen, part of humanity that I like is so much, we have got too much greatness that we haven't even uncovered and discovered. But God, through situations, he's saying, daughter, daughter, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna take you out of the situation. I'm gonna make you walk right through it. So now Jesus goes through the cross. Now Jesus goes on the cross, hanging there. Oh my God. And the last words he has to utter, Eloi, Eloi, Lama Sabagadan. And then like, now he's finished. Oh my God, without knowing what's about to happen. Oh my Jesus. Now, now fast forward to that. Let's fast forward to that. Jesus is buried. Three days are done. And now here's the mystery about uh, that, that, that I so love about Christianity. Here's the mystery. Jesus is dead. They are all relaxed. They are all good. They have already repositioned themselves. We dealt with that one. He's done. He's dead. We're okay. Let's move on. Uh, put the assemblies here. The scribes there. The Pharisees there. Uh, the meetings of the assemblies. We're okay. We can still move on. We can still eat back on. In fact, uh, those pigs that he killed, okay, fine. Don't mind them, but okay, fine. We can eat pig back on. Now, no, no, no. Part of the mystery that I love about, G, by, about God is the fact that he is an uncalculated God. You cannot predict God. Part of the examples, uh, part of the uh, names you've been given, she cannot make it. She cannot be married. He cannot rise in business. He cannot do anything. It's the fact that God is already channeling angels. Have you noticed how angels were in operation? It was angels that came and stood by his tomb. Oh my Jesus, I like the angelic ministry because it's part of the prophetic. I love seeing angels. I like interacting with them. Now here's the thing. So angels are already on assignment and they are the one who remove the tomb. They roll the tombstone. Oh my Jesus, let me tell you right now, I decree and I declare there are angels on assignment for your crossover. There are angels on assignment for your resurrection. On this resurrection Sunday, Jesus did not only just resurrect in power and in glory, but he resurrected with you and me in mind because whatever that you had died to, oh my God, he's saying, oh daughter, I'm not leaving you behind in the grave. Listen, there are two scenarios that I like, men of God. Two different scenarios. We got Lazarus in the grave. Oh my God. And Jesus was outside the grave. And then we got Jesus in the grave. And he's walking out of the grave. Two different scenarios. Oh my God. Sometimes you need Jesus to call you out of your situation. But sometimes he's saying in this time, I'm not going to call you out. We're going to walk out together in the situation. Oh my God. I feel Jesus in this place. We are just about to conclude. I feel the Holy Ghost in here. Listen to me. Listen to me. Very good. God is about to make you cross over to your destiny. It's not about how you're going to calculate your bank account, who you left home. It's not about that. Forget all about that. Because on this day, you are waking up in power and in glory. Something in you is going to start speaking and thinking differently like you used to. Oh my God, your mind is shifting. I feel Jesus here. My, 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 my. Glory to Jesus. Somebody Let's raise up on our feet. Oh my God. Oh Jesus. Do I have some people here? Do I have some people here? We like it's my time. I said it's my time. Is it your time? Is it your time? Show it that it's your time. Show it that you are a person who's walking out of death. Show it that you are a person today. Oh my God. We have been put in a tomb and they said, keep quiet. You can't speak anymore. Now, oh my, I wish we had a keyboard. No, 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 no. Now listen, I don't know, oh my Jesus. 
Oh my God. Listen. Oh, man of God. Because I like illustrations. Because illustrations make me connect better to people. Because listen and listen to me very good. I'm just going to do this out of my mind. Forgive me. Now listen. Here's, here's, here's the truth. So part of being dead is the fact that you cannot speak. Because when you are dead, oh my God, you are lying down. Your body cannot speak. Your mouth cannot speak. And part of lying down is this. Everyone expects you to be quiet, not emotional, not moving. You are dead silent so here's jesus on the grave he's dead silent and not speaking now remember we are with him in death remember we are speaking with him together so because we have died with him and on the third day we are to resurrect now born coming unto born and what's happening is that we are to oh my jesus Now, here's the thing. Here's the thing. So, you are dead. You are dead there. Now, what I like about a dead person, man of God, is when they are dead, they are dead. But understand the illustration. I wish I could do it with someone else. Now, when they are dead, they are dead. But when they are waking up, they don't wake up like someone who's coming from sleeping. Because understand that death is different from sleeping. So, when they are dead, when they are dead, the, the resurrection power that hits them changes them. Remember, they are not coming out of in confusion like you once saw in someone's video. They don't come from confusion. It's not a, you are not com coming from a confused state because you know where you are, who you were, and you know what you got, where, where the realm that you have connected back to. Am I am I here? So you are not coming from confusion. You are alert. So one of the things that happens is that's power is responsible for resurrection. And part of power is it has to pull your soul from wherever it is and bring you back into this body. Do you think it's going to bring your body and then you're going to be like, ah, no. They, 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 there is a reaction, man of God. There is a reaction. Your body starts shaking. Your vibe starts shaking. Everything starts coming out. The blood flow that was no longer there, the blood that was clotting starts coming out together. Part of resurrection in your life, there are things that have been still. They are about to vibrate. How do you know? How do you know? A man of God, how do you know that resurrection is taking place? There are things, oh my God, that are about to start shaking. Oh my God, there is an auntie somewhere who bewitched me, who's about to start. Uh, there is something that is about to happen. Why? Because part of resurrection is that it responds to power. It has to respond to power. Oh, Jesus. And today, someone is about to resurrect. Because not only are you crossing over, not only are you passing over, you are crossing a line. A line that was said it's impossible. Because why am I saying it was impossible? Even during time, they knew that it's impossible. When a person is dead, he's dead. So Jesus does the impossible. He does not wait for someone to come and resurrect him. He resurrects by himself. So part of what God is about to demonstrate to you is that the impossible situations in your life are about to become possible. When they say that you cannot hold a million runs or a million US, it's impossible with men who think at such level. But with you, all things are possible. With God, all things are possible. I'm about to give children to them that were buried. The doctor says it's impossible. Oh, we removed this and they removed the fetus. It's impossible. But it's doctors, come on. They are not God. The, 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 the creditors, they say it, you are in debt and you cannot uh, just file for bankruptcy. But God is saying, I can do better. I can, if I can send a raven, if I can send a raven to feed a human being, what more of you? What more of you? If he can send a raven to feed a prophet in hiding, what more of you? Ladies and gentlemen, those children of yours that were saying, ah, ah, these are mischievous. They are on drugs. Leave it all to Jesus.